Hi and welcome back. In this tutorial, I want to talk about the method implementation protocol MIP 3.4, the dynamic contemporaneous split bifurcated contemporaneous period. What do we need to implement? The source validation protocols for basic implementation. 2.1 baseline validation we need the baseline and we need the 2.3 update validation because we are comparing an update to an update but in our first window we are comparing the first update to the baseline so that's why we need also a baseline for enhanced implementation we need the as built validation here is the process or the workflow because this process is a bit different from the 3.3. The 3.3 was really straightforward. We compare an update to an update. There is an extra step in the 3.4 which will make all difference. So here is one example. I'm gonna show you the process of one window. The start will be 1st of January and the end of the window is 1st of February. So that's my schedule at the beginning of the window. It is schedule update number two. This is my data date, 1st of January, and it is called before of period schedule, all right? In the 3.3, I'm gonna compare it with schedule update number three, and this will be the end of the window but there is a difference here in the 3.4. The 3.4 is dynamic split. And as the name implies, the method splits the logic from actual progress. We will copy the schedule update number two file. So I'm gonna take a copy of the before of period schedule. I'm gonna take a copy of that. This is the schedule update itself. I'm gonna take a copy then I will import the actuals of schedule update number three. Data date 1st of February. I will import the actual start, actual finish, percentage complete, and the remaining duration. So what I'm gonna do is to go to the schedule update number three. I'm gonna export the actuals and import it into this file, which is a copy of update number two. Okay, after I import the actuals, my data date is still the same, 1st of January. So after that, I will run the schedule at data date 1st of February. After I took all actuals and imported them from update number 3. So I will run the schedule at 1st of February and this will be my end of period. Why did I do that? Because I wanted to split the actual progress from the logic. When I do that, I am ignoring any changes to the schedule that took place during that window. Because when you prepared update number three, maybe you have made some changes. And I wanna evaluate the delays before any changes. That's the purpose. Then you're gonna follow the same process as 3.3. You will perform window analysis on the critical path activities and the near critical path. You will also review changes between the schedule update itself, number three, the one I took actuals from, and I will compare it with the end of period. I'm gonna just review any changes. You know? The end of period is the one without any changes. So let's look at one example inside Promavera P6. I have my baseline and these are the schedule updates. The update itself that was submitted to the engineer or consultant. So that's my schedule update. In the 3.3, we compare update one to update two, right? Or update two to update three. In the 3.4, we are gonna bifurcate the schedule update using the same process that I have just explained. So for example, 
what does bifurcated update to mean? I took a copy of update number one. I imported the actuals from update number two and inserted them into that copy of update number one. Then I run the schedule at the data date of update number two. So you can, if, if you have any confusion, you can go back to the workflow and check it again. Probably I have made some changes in update number two. So, but I wanna evaluate the delays before any changes. That's the purpose of the split method. And you're gonna follow the same process as 3.3. .3. The one I showed you before in another video, you fill the table and you identify any critical path shift so it's going to be the same process. The only difference is we use a different schedule for the end of period. So in this case, in the bifurcated method or the 3.4, I'm going to compare update number one to bifurcated update number two. For the second window or next window, I'm going to compare update number two as beginning of period. I will compare it with bifurcated update number three when you are doing the analysis you want to also compare the update itself with the bifurcated version so for example in this window i'm gonna compare update number one with bifurcated update number two in the 3.3 .3, i will compare update number one with update number two so in the 3.4 i'm gonna update i'm gonna compare update number one with bifurcated update number two when i perform the analysis i want to also compare the bifurcated update number two with the update two itself to review the changes so let's look at one example you know it's going to be the same process but the only difference is i'm having this extra dimension of analyzing the delays before any schedule changes okay so let's assume that i have done the analysis between update number one and the bifurcated update number two the way i have shown you before in 3.3 .3. to show you an example i wanna open both files at the same time update number one and the bifurcated update number one and if i collapse all i will see that the bifurcated update compilation date is different from the update itself. Why? Because definitely we have schedule changes and the purpose of the split method or the 3.4 is to investigate the changes and perform the delay analysis taking into consideration the schedule changes. Okay, and after investigation, this is what I have seen. So in this window during this period, the contractor made this change. They changed the relationship between compaction and the rebar. It was finished to start and let's go to the bifurcated. The one, you know, if you remember the bifurcated one is a copy of the previous update and we imported the actuals before any changes. So it was finished to start. So it means that the contractor has made a change. So the change the relationship from finish to start to start to start with lag of four days okay so they mitigated the delay they allowed an overlap between excavation and the compaction uh, between compaction and draft rebar you know i'm not saying that you should disregard all the changes some changes are realistic documented and justified some changes might have been discussed with uh, all project parties and agreed upon but I am saying that this method will allow you to investigate the schedule changes and the associated impact on the delay analysis. It's up to you if you want to revert the changes back or continue the analysis in this way, but it will give you this extra dimension in analysis. Let's open update number three, for example. So it is exactly the same. Okay, you know it changes. And the critical path it changed as well from the warehouse to equipment so the critical path shifted and the contractor did not make any changes so why you know because it's a question mark why would the contractor make changes to the warehouse to mitigate the delay and not for equipment for example so you know maybe they wanted to manipulate 
they wanted to disqualify the warehouse activities as a critical path so they wanted to eliminate it and they wanted to allow the equipment to overtake the critical path for any reason maybe the delay here is the responsibility of the employer and they wanted to show that so they can have extension of time claim uh, so there are many questions here so that's uh, the purpose of this method maybe this is the intention of the contractor the advantages of this method it can consider concurrency in the calculation because you have a window analysis so it is easy for you or applicable to see how the contractor is progressing throughout the project and determine the concurrent delays it will consider acceleration as well it's a more realistic and reliable analysis because it will consider the schedule updates and and any shifting in the critical path Analyze the schedule changes and the associated impact against the schedule. Effective review of the contractor's schedule submissions. Because as I mentioned, you know, I gave one example about the contractor's intentions. So it's a really good tool to effectively review the contractor's submissions. It's effective also for the identification of contractors' manipulations in the schedule that were executed to achieve a favored outcome. Disadvantages, the segregation of responsibility might be subject to challenges by the opposition. I think it's the same disadvantages as the 3.3, you know, because it's going to be the same process and the same steps so if you want to refresh your knowledge about the disadvantages uh, of the 3.3 you can go back to that tutorial um, it's also time consuming because think about it you are going to fill the table you want to also bifurcate many programs so it's gonna be time consuming it's costly as well because it's time consuming and you must have the resources and the team to perform this analysis uses it will split the logic changes from actual progress data. It's suitable for complicated projects and if you have the baseline and the schedule updates. You must, you know, one of the uses is when you have a strong records because if you remember, again, it's the same steps as 3.3 and in the 3.3 tutorial, we are performing the analysis manually. We are comparing the plant against the as-built. So you must have a strong records to justify your claim and analyze the delay effectively. If you want to perform window analysis, then it is a good method. Limitations. It is not suitable if you are short on time. If you are rushing, this method is time consuming. The analysis can be subjective because each party might have its own story. The same as 3.3. So the contractor might claim two days delay because of obstructions, but the employer might say or counter attack and say that no, you do not have sufficient amount of power, so um, the delay is because of you. So every party can have its own story. Insufficient records can compromise the whole analysis because everything is based on the um, as-built validation and the update validation, the same as 3.3. This method is observational. You only observe the delay and you analyze the planned versus actual data you do not model the delay you do not add any new activities or delete activities to model the impact it's dynamic because it does not rely on a single set of cpm logic it compares an update to an update so the, so the cpm logic will it change as a measuring point as you proceed further in the analysis it's a periodic you will perform the delay analysis in windows using the periodic progress the periodic mode it can be all periods fixed periods for example on weekly or monthly basis or you choose to have grouped periods as necessary based on project phases or delay events and this is it for the MIP 3.4 dynamic split the MIP 3.5 is very similar to the 3.3 and the 3.4.
in the MIP 3.5, it's a reconstructed updates. You use this method if you want to reconstruct schedule updates for any reason before you implement the analysis method, which is very similar to the 3.3 and the 3.4. The first step is to recreate the schedule updates, then implement the analysis according to MIP 3.3 or 3.4. We recreate the schedule updates, maybe because one reason is because they are missing, for example, and you want to reconstruct them so you can use a straight line development. So, for example, if one activity took two weeks to complete according to the daily reports. So you're going to assume that in the first schedule update, you're going to have 50%, then the remaining 50% in the second update. So it's a straight line development. Uh, of course, it's hypothetical, it should not be the case, but it is maybe an approach that you can agree upon with the employer, just in case you don't have your schedule updates. The recreation requires strong records in your daily reports, minutes of meetings, issues log, etc. You can also recreate the schedule updates if there is a missing significant scope, for example, because otherwise you cannot depend on the existing schedule updates because it will not reflect real life. Because you are recreating schedule updates, so each modification is a potential challenge by the opposition. So this method is very straightforward. I will not talk much about it. So this method is straightforward. You only need to reconstruct schedule updates and recreate them for any reason. But after you do so, you can implement the analysis using MIP 3.3 and 3.4 the same way that I have shown you before.